Hi. What, what's up? What's up? How are you? Not bad. What's your background? Q Suites. <laughs> okay. Hi, welcome to Spill the Tea with Bougie Miles. Today I am joined by my buddy Spencer Howard. Spencer, say hi to everybody. Hey, everybody. You can find Spencer at straighttothepoints.co, C-O, not .com, and then at 10X Travel, the Facebook group. It's a website, too. So today, Spencer is joining us for some fun Q&A. We're going to talk about United changes and how much they suck, as usual, <laughs> and then we're going to play Plead the Fifth and possibly do a bet for charity. Anyway, Spencer, thank you for coming, and tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into this crazy world. Yeah, for sure. Thanks so much for having me, Bethany. Um, yeah, so as you mentioned, I'm, I write uh, at straighttothepoints.co. Um, I guess I should, should say I don't really write a blog there, but I do send out a newsletter with uh, business and first class award space um, for, you know, anywhere from two to eight people if you're looking to travel internationally. Um, I'm not, if you are not subscribed to the newsletter, it's probably <laughs> the best thing in award travel. And I'm not kidding. I'm not even like... I've not said this on any video yet. It's one of the best things, if not the best thing in award travel. Carry on. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, and, and I help run uh, 10xtravel.com, uh, basically a massive Facebook community of like 58,000 people uh, with a, a website to go with it, um, where we just help beginners kind of start to navigate the miles and points world. So I'm just all over the internet. That's awesome. Uh, and who better to learn from? Also, we'll talk about yeah. Julie later. Hint, hint. <laughs> okay, so first we're going to play rapid fire. This is just where I ask you a couple questions. So first is a softball. Um, do you have any hobbies other than miles and points? Nope. No. <laughs> um, I still, so I used to work in politics from my sophomore year of college, which was like 2006 until the end of 2016. So it was a while. Yeah, so I'm still kind of politically obsessed. Um, not rant the TV kind of way, but just like, I just enjoy kind of thinking about public policy issues because again, super nerd. Um, other than that, I play a lot of softball with friends in DC. Um, baseball is one of my favorite sports, so. And I played baseball in the college, so that's okay. as close to baseball as it gets after shoulder surgery. Um, <laughs> so after shoulder surgery, it's kind of it's over if you're if you're a pitcher. So um, yeah, baseball, love watching baseball. Formula One racing is another big one. So I really Formula One. Like, oh yeah, absolutely love it. I went to the race in Germany last year. I was uh, I was supposed to be going to the race in Spain in like just over a week, um, but that's canceled because of, you know, Corona. Um, so, so yeah, I'll have to find another race to go to this year, but yeah. Who's your favorite team, just in case anybody actually cares? Oh, uh, I don't know. I, I think I just have favorite drivers right now. Um, so Danny Rick or Dan, Daniel Ricardo, he's from Australia, um, hilarious. Um, Charles Leclerc, he right, drives for Ferrari. Um, young guy out of Monaco. So, you know, it's just a lot of fun uh, in Formula One. If you're competitive, like it makes sense to you just trying to be first. So it's just a lot of fun. Um, and it's just like a totally crazy environment. Like just so many people show up to race weekends. Um, and then of course there's like the super fancy paddock club, which I've never actually been in because have not been willing to spend the like few thousand dollars it would take to get me in there. <laughs> so. Is it like NASCAR? Or it's different. I like Formula One because it's kind of like the pinnacle of motorsport. They're pushing technology forward. Um, and they make both left and right hand turns, which I think is nice. Um, but they're, yeah, it's just, it's a, but it's also international. So that's fun. Like there's a race in Austin, Texas. There's a race in Brazil. There's a race in Japan, Australia, you know, the Middle East. There's a race in the UAE. Um, there's a bunch of races in Europe. So it's, I think it kind of fits with my interest in international travel and that I can kind of go all over the world if I want and see these things. Uh, there's even like a night race in Singapore, which looks awesome. So anyway, I feel like I definitely clearly Formula One is a bit of an obsession. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it makes sense. So like what you're saying makes sense where, so like I channeled my competitiveness into uh, poker back in the day, you know, that was like my, 
and back in the day my... you're done with that yeah no okay <laughs> Still very much alive and you know kicking yeah, yeah. but obviously i don't enjoy online poker the way that most people do so right. for me like it's all about like live i still um, remember a classmate of mine in college who made a bunch of money on online poker while we like while we were still in school and he just had like he had so much stuff in his room and i was like how'd you get a big flat screen like you're like a junior in college <laughs> and i know your parents didn't get it for you so he did all right, I guess. I won my first poker tournament in high school on my mom's like computer. Uh, it was like 800 bucks and I was like hooked for life, you know? <laughs> and you went out and booked a, a night at the Four Seasons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Maybe or even half. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah. All right. Second question. Should we tell people about my wonderful background? <laughs> Yes, of course. So I don't know if anybody noticed, but Spencer looks like he's flying one of his two suites. Products. Picture from uh, <laughs> March, um, right as the COVID situation went nuts, and I didn't realize it was everything was going to hit the fan at that time. But I, oh, my trip was cut short by like ten days. So I'm like, part of me is like, oh man, I didn't get to get, like finish the trip and see everywhere I was planning. But yeah, I'm, I'm fortunate to have at least flown a little bit more or a little more recently. Um, but now all I can think about is getting back into this. And so I've made this my Zoom virtual background. So whenever I talk to people on Zoom, what, what's that? What am I doing? Oh, let's see, where is it? This right here, you can't even see my hand, I guess. But that is uh, the Tattinger Rosé Champagne. <laughs> I wish I could just say, like, um, but uh, so good. <laughs> and then how does that compare to other products that you've done? Like, did you love it as much as you thought you would? And like, give us a, well, I have this to rapid fire. Give us top three and where it like ranks there. Top three Ooh, for like business class or just anything like business class. This is like, Obviously. this is it for business class, which was, I was wondering if it would live up to the hype and it absolutely did. Um, I understand their first yeah, in business right. kind of marketing. Um, but yeah, that it's definitely the best business class. I'm trying to think of, I also love KLM because I'm just like straight up KLM fanboy and anyone who's seen me on Instagram knows exactly what I'm talking about. Um, yeah. and uh, so uh, I mean, KLM is just, that's my, it's my jam. So I just think they're super friendly and do a really nice job, but it's not like as fancy as Qatar Airways Q Suites. It's just, I just really like what they do. They also bring you cheese cubes as like, a snack and it's like so far superior to pretzels and peanuts i'm sorry just like it's cheese with a little like dutch flag like in <laughs> like stuck into one of the cubes it's awesome so love that there's so much fun to be had out there yeah i can't wait that's like the first thing i'm doing is the day that i am allowed to travel i'm going everywhere like i'm not coming home for a month and i'm just doing yeah. First class, first class, first class. <laughs> four seasons, four seasons, four seasons. Don't even care. I, I, oh, don't even care. No, I don't even care at this point. I don't care. Who's going to unpack care. your bags for you? Well, oh, I mean, if I'm staying in a hotel, oh, then oh, sure, okay. right? <laughs> but, you know, like I did in, um, on my way to Europe to meet you guys, we did a <laughs> group trip for everybody who doesn't know. Um, and I met them, what, three days into the trip? So that... Yeah. Fly <laughs> Emirates and Etihad first on several different products, and I ended up sleeping <laughs> in an airport because, like, why not? As one does. Yeah. So if I do end up staying in a hotel, I'll stay somewhere nice. But if I have to sleep in an airport or on the plane, that's way better. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. You know, because who doesn't go through Dubai to get to Europe from New York? It's true. Crazy. Crazy. I don't know who who wouldn't do that. Right, it just makes perfect sense to me. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so back to question. <laughs> Who's your celebrity crush? Oh man, I've never really been a celebrity person, honestly. That's like I'm the worst with that. <laughs> I, I haven't watched. I haven't watched. What is the Tiger Show? A uh, Tiger. Uh, That's okay. Yeah, I haven't done that. About that anyway. <laughs> haven't done that. I just like I don't know. I honestly have no idea. I just don't think about celebrities that often. Oh, if we asked 100 people, 100 out of 100 would have a celebrity crush except for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm like trying to think of somebody. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, so this is sort of related. Who's the most famous person in your contacts? 
famous person in my contacts. Do I know anyone famous? Um, people who are famous to our viewers. To our viewers, yeah. I mean, like, oh, I know, I know, Gib from God Save the Points. He's a good friend of mine. He's awesome. Okay. There you go. I'm sure. People and he's know. he's been on television plenty with people chasing him around the world to try to get his first class seat. So like that counts as celebrity. I still can't believe that the last time he did that, he he said that like nobody recognized him and he would go up to them and they thought it was a joke or like. Uh, I mean, but can you imagine somebody coming up to me like, "Hey, you want to have like you want to go fly business class?" And they're you're gonna be like, "Yeah, but not from you." <laughs> like. Who are you, weirdo? <laughs> yeah, you would think it was strange, but at the same time, like, I'm already in the airport. The guy's gotten through security, so, like... We also think about it differently. Anybody who offers us the chance to fly something fun, we're like, well, yeah. Um, of course, you might actually look... If somebody asked you that, you'd be like, here's my boarding pass. Already there. <laughs> yeah. Maybe if I ended up with a window and I wanted an aisle, if I had to sit next to somebody. Yeah. But he, I mean, it's, I mean, he did get a lot of interaction in uh, London. Um, I just think it was more prevalent in the press there. Um, so I think the US press should have covered it more. It was a really fun promotion that he did. I mean, he's done it twice now and it, both of them in Austin. So. Also, I don't know how as an experienced traveler, he's even willing to do that. <laughs> and he's not like a little guy. He's not like five No, he's, he's like a full- he, he and I are about the same size. Like we're both tall people. Like it's, um, yeah, kudos to him. Are you six four? Six three. Right? I mean, <laughs> you're not like going around like, hey, you want my thing and I'll sit like all the way in the back. Yeah. I'm uncomfortable. I couldn't yeah. do it and I'm like 10 inches shorter than both of you. Well, not really. <laughs> um, yeah, so super interesting. And that I would say qualifies as a famous person. Okay. There we go. <laughs> What's the best concert you've ever been to? You can say favorite band too if you can't think of it. Um, well, Pearl Jam is my favorite band. I've just never been to a Pearl Jam concert. Um, yeah. yeah, didn't see it coming. Um, <laughs> I'm so upbeat and happy. It kind of throws people off. Um, God, yeah. I, again, don't go to a lot of concerts. Um, really? Why? Yeah. Well, at one point when I was working in politics, you make like no money and have no time. So like the idea of like spending money to go to a concert versus like dinner uh, <laughs> it's like just you know cost benefit um yeah i mean i've i've seen god what have i i've seen uh aaron lewis who was stain's lead singer once he did like an acoustic thing in south bend when i was in college um but then <laughs> more recently i went to see agnes obel who's i think she's danish um very different type of music um uh -huh. kind of all over the map so Dave so Matthews was a good concert. Dave Matthews was a good concert, like way I back in the day. I you to say something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I went with friends when I was in high school or college or something. So, yeah, I'm all over the map. We can get some metal in there. I could go to a metal. Oh, I'm supposed to go see Rammstein in August. We'll see if like the, uh, um, yeah, we'll see what the kind of situation is with concerts at that point. But yeah, my friend Jimmy and I are supposed to go in DC. We, 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 we play softball together. We always like to play that music uh, in the car ride there just to scare our other oh, teammates. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, I think one of them's terrified of us. Roll up with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm all over the map there, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I understand that. I'm shocked that you don't love, shocked that you don't love live music. But you have really I don't like it. I mean, I mean, I've been so I guess my favorite would really be it's not even concert, though. It's just like going to like a bar. And so the Coleman, um, my friend Dave Coleman um, is the lead singer for them. And like they do kind of like roots rock Americana alt country. I think it's just because he's from like East Tennessee and he sounds like he's from Tennessee that people go, well, it's country. Um, where I think he's just like, I just like rock and roll music and I'm just trying to make good stuff. Um, but I think they make great music. Um, okay, and what is your favorite mileage program, like the actual miles? Like somebody says to you, you can earn any a thousand of these miles, which ones do you want? I don't really think about airlines that way. Like I don't love any airline enough to be obsessed with their programs. Not the airline, uh, which miles? Well, but, but even the programs, because like it's just, each one has their own use. I'm like weirdly obsessed with trying to like figure out which program to use for which redemption. Yeah. Um, 
and I guess I just don't, I don't think about it as like one program just being great. Like I love A&A because they have, it's round trip only, but they have great rates. You just have to like be willing to risk losing the award space as you wait two, three, four days for points to transfer to them. Um, but they all, and then they pass on surcharges on some partners. So it's like, it's great in theory in some circumstances. Um, so it's just, yeah, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the worst with this. Like, it's just, it always depends on what I'm trying to do. I just don't think that any one program has it just like, a lock on being good. Okay. Um, okay. Um, world's most frustrating interview. So this is the first time nobody's answered a question in rapid fire. <laughs> 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 oh, but actually, well, a really good segue to our topic today. So, okay, one thing you'll learn about Spencer if you ever meet him or, you know, if you're friends with him is that I like this man loves a soapbox. <laughs> And all of his My points thoughts. are very well reasoned and valid. <laughs> and since he is probably like one of the top five, I would say, airline mileage points experts, probably even in the world. I don't want to like give you a big head, but I think your your knowledge of like booking programs and you know how to do everything is probably like like top five percent. So there you go. Thank so you. Tell us I think it's just about the changes with United and what you think and your thoughts. Yeah, so United changed, I guess it was last year, they announced new changes to their loyalty program, which basically now requires you to earn, I think it's PQPs. Like, it's basically you have to spend a lot of money with United. Like, that's, I mean, to get top tier status, you're going to have to spend tons of money. But you could still fly partner airlines and credit them, and you would... Um, the way the partner earning worked, you would be able to earn United status faster. Um, now they, they've like, uh, nope. uh, so what Spencer is talking about is the number of miles that you would fly on partner airlines counted towards uh, your status. So now, you yeah. Might and it would be, it would be like a percentage of that was converted into PQPs. Now they've like drastically reduced the PQPs that you can earn uh, on their partners, which just makes it, super difficult to earn status and it's kind of unfortunate if you're somebody who flies united a lot but also flies partners when you're traveling abroad um but i think for from my perspective i hope that it pushes people who don't travel for work a lot to realize they don't need airline status to get what they want especially if you're living in the states like i get things are different abroad but like we have tons and tons of credit card options with tons and tons of points options why are you chasing status to get an experience you could get just by using points um, or even just booking a really good business class fair deal um, there's just there's too many ways to get what you want without running around the world or doing mileage runs and not even get it like not even leaving the airport and just flying back and forth just by kind of strategically earning and burning points um, and besides the fact that you have to take the time like you also have to, especially if you have like a family, are you going to like go leave your, like, you know, your kids for like 12 days at like, you know, 12, 15 days a year just to like, all right, I'm going to go earn status. And I was like, well, instead of spending 12 to 15 days by yourself on a plane, why don't you just earn points? And, or even if you're just going to use money on flights, just use that towards a flight for you and your family or whoever you're traveling with and just go do the trip you want. Like, I don't know. It's, it's my, this is my, ba like, this is definitely my soapbox. <laughs> Times have changed. Elite status doesn't matter as much. And do you think that elite status doesn't matter as much because everybody can get it now with like all of the, you know, like Delta MQMs and the, the premium credit cards and then AA also offers some options. I think United has one. Like, do you think, or do you think it's because you can just kind of upgrade yourself? I think a lot of it's just our credit card situation. Like airlines make a lot of money by selling banks in the U S miles. Like, okay, great. That's how you want to make your money. That's awesome. But for people who aren't traveling regularly for work, like why, why are you going out of your way and taking your time and money and putting it towards stuff that it's not even about enjoying the experience. It's just about like kind of getting through it so that you can like say you have status or like i mean you're going to spend all this time flying just to so that you can get an upgrade on like a domestic flight that's probably like two hours 
like I'm like, what, was it worth it? If you like, and people are like, well, I only spent, I don't know, like a few thousand dollars to do it. And I was like, yeah, but you could have just like booked the trip you wanted in cash <laughs> abroad <laughs> in business for the few thousand dollars. And you what you wouldn't you don't have to worry. I mean, you can't get upgraded really like unless it's an operational upgrade on international flights anyway. So you've already got the business class thing. You get the lounge access because you're flying business class. What it like? What it? What it? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. And it's I mean like I, if it's just like you love flying like okay. And if you have the budget for it, you budgeted for it like. But if just I I have a hard time when someone tries to tell me they're being rational and I'm like. No, no, it makes financial sense. I mean, it doesn't. Like, it's okay to want to. It's fine. Like, I have no problem if that's what you're into. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm somebody who will just, like, go fly somewhere. Um, love it. So it's no judgment there. It's just don't try to, like, delude yourself or others into thinking that, oh, man, you really need to be earning this status to, like, make the travel experience better. There it is. That's my, that's my thing. <laughs> Um, bring, bring on the hate mail. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like people who don't like United um, will be happy with this segment overall, which is <laughs> most people. United um, is trash. My friend Mark Buttons, have you ever seen him on Instagram? Every time he posts something and like it on an Instagram story, he calls it trash United. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. It really is. It's the worst. I, it's like <laughs> It's so funny. Yeah, I always say like the race to the bottom is strong, you know, it's like yeah. between American and United, but I think United takes it every time. It, <laughs> they, I feel like they just both work really hard to they earn that position. So like, hard to be the worst. It's, it's unreal. <laughs> I don't know. They see things that Delta does and they're like, well, let's copy that. And I'm like, that's the stuff that everybody hates about Delta. Um, so they'll copy that anyway, but they never copy the like operational success where it's like things are on flights are on time and you know the crews feel happy doing their jobs i'm not saying every delta crew is like stoked but i mean like it certainly seems like people are happier um so oh, 100%. yeah yeah so i don't know good old united so i actually missed my first flight ever um with delta because i was so used to american airlines always leaving at least 10 minutes late oh yeah so I got to the gate like on time or maybe like a minute late and I missed my flight. And I was yeah, like, they were like, yeah, we're good. We're done. I was like, <laughs> oh, go. so I was like what do you mean? Whole new world. Yeah. I was like, everybody's on the flight. Yeah. <laughs> like, American would have started 20 minutes from now. So yeah, it's funny with American. If I show up when it's, when it's going to board half the time, it doesn't board for another like 20 minutes. And then, half the time we're in like group four already and I was like I don't understand I showed up like right now and it's like a full <laughs> flight so it's not like groups one two and three just like we're three people and somehow you've like so clearly you started boarding way earlier than you okay, planned right. so it's or or when they delay flights this is my pet peeve is like delaying a flight after you've gone to the gate and they say it's going to be delayed 15 minutes I'm like no it has been 15 minutes since you were supposed to board the flight. Yeah. We're already, yeah, you're, you're not like, you need to say now we will be delayed a further, like, you know, it's gonna be this much longer. So I'm always like, come on guys, like, just just be honest with us. Um, I, I mean, especially if you like, if you're fortunate enough to be like hanging out in a lounge and can relax somewhere that's not super crowded. Um, or if you're doing work, like I often work from a lounge if I'm in the airport. Oh, that's my favorite like, thing to do is work in lounge. Yeah. Just like, it's a great, I mean, especially if you're working remotely, like, like we do, like, why not? And if you're not going to board on time, like it tells me on the app, if you just update your system, like I, I appreciate the American app where it lets me know that boarding is about to start. Like, that's great. Like that, I mean, truly, because you, it's not, though. what's that? It's never right though. Well, I, the app has been pretty good for me. It's just, they don't necessarily update it to say it's delayed until too late. And so... <laughs> You know, when it's on time, they're like telling me the boarding's gonna happen. It's just that, you know, that sometimes they don't update delays. I always enjoy Flight Aware has like <laughs> lets me know that something is delayed before the airline. That's always my favorite. Huh. You know, I don't even have like I don't even have that downloaded or anything. I've... 
I've just I seen that before. I don't even remember why. <laughs> I think I was looking to see where the plane was or something and because it'll show you like the path. I was like, oh, I wonder like how close it is. And it showed that it was like delayed. I was like, well, what? why isn't the American attacking me this too? So is there anything else you want to say about United status while we're here? Got nothing else on that. It's just okay. airline status in general. Okay. Free yourselves. <laughs> Free yourselves. Okay. And then what about, do you feel differently about people who travel like as uh, they pay for their own costs and then they get to deduct it at the end of the year? Yeah. I mean, if that's something that you've built into your kind of work expenses, I mean, have at it. Um, I guess in some ways it's up to you if you want to like have more take home pay or you want to be more comfortable while traveling. Okay. Um, I think there's an argument for both. Like, <laughs> I, I would love to see more businesses fly like work travelers in business class when they're going, you know, to Asia. And it's like 12 to 15 hours on a plane and it's like, show up and work. Um, I would love to like, I think that's a, I think, you know, if you're doing that and you, you have to kind of take that out of your expenses. Like I understand if you've built that into your uh, kind of calculations, because man, that is <laughs> showing up to work is not easy after 15 hours. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> so yeah, I, again, it's priorities. Figure out what your priorities are in that phase. Hundred so. percent. Yeah, I mean, I think like for a very small subset of people, the math is very different. Um, it's just a small subset. Mm -hmm. But it's a yeah, it's a very small subset. Right. Like, and 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 I should say like if you subset. if you're someone who travels a lot for work and maybe you have like a year where you don't travel quite as much, but if you do like a last minute mileage run to go from like platinum with diamond or platinum with delta to diamond and you're just like right on the cusp cool like I, I see for someone who's going to travel all the time the following year like the benefit to like being bumped up right. so it's just but again small number of people who actually do yeah. work travel yes most people who do it are irrationally acting <laughs> but it's it's an i mean it's what loyalty programs are all about emotions and hooking you in like i get it um, and I think it stems a little bit from at one point you could earn a lot of like redeemable miles by flying. Yeah. Um, That's how I sort of got into it. I was like, wait a minute, if I do this <laughs> and yeah. I on a partner and I credit it to these people, yeah. like, whoa, you know, like Alaska mostly. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's usually, I get so excited about that. And then I'm like, wait, and I get status and this, that's freaking <laughs> cool. But again, like who needs Alaska status? Me. People on the West Coast who travel for work. <laughs> yeah, but you can't even like really lie, lie ever. Oh, yeah, but, but you fly partners internationally. So. Yeah, but but still, if I'm if I'm going for status, I want something that's going to give me like a bump in my regular like domestic travel too. Yep. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But there are certain people or most people who don't even care about lying flat. I don't understand it. But... <laughs> <laughs> I refuse to fly. What's the, what was the celeb or the, there was like a model, like a supermodel was like, I don't get out of bed for like, unless I'm getting like X amount of money or something. I feel like I don't fly unless I'm lying down. Like that's <laughs> unless I oh, okay. completely vertical. I don't know. I'm that? sorry. Is this an angle flat seat? No, no, I can't go. <laughs> oh no. That's, a, that's a big no. Uh -huh. <laughs> what is this from 1985? Get out of here. not going to happen. No. <laughs> Love it. At the right angle, 45. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Right? You, you want to be 180 degrees as opposed to 90 degrees. And then 90 um, not, 90 well, is... The other way, it's 45. <laughs> 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 We're going to leave that in, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Spencer silently judging now, but not silently. <laughs> That's why I love you. <laughs> uh, really good deals on flights. A couple that you've booked maybe that you told me about and whether or not you think it's actually going to happen. Well, of course they're going to happen. <laughs> so I booked the, Air, was it Air France listed first class flights out of Algiers. Algeria to, I guess you go to San Francisco or no, Portland or Houston. Um, I don't even remember how much that was, but it was only several, it was like several, several hundred bucks for a one way. In La Premier, they're like first class, which is really super expensive. 
You don't think they're going to cancel? Oh, they, they downgraded everybody. But it's still to business. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. Live flat seat on the 777. If you got the A380, you would not be in a live flat, so Bethany would not fly it. Um, and then, what's the other one? Uh, Mexico City to Cape Town. Uh, several several hundred dollars to get round trip. I guess I booked it as a multi-city and included a stop in Sao Paulo for a couple nights on the way back. Um, and that was, yeah, again, several hundred dollars. So business class for both. I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, it's amazing. So, okay, so going back, so Air France, anytime they have a fare that feels too good to be true, if you book in La Premier, you're like, They've canceled it before. Yeah, they've canceled a lot of these before. Um, but I, I, I don't enjoy how airlines treat fares they decide are mistakes because sometimes they're so close to fares they honor and you're just like, oh, I'm supposed to know that the difference between $1,000 and $1,200 is like, oh, that's, that's too much. $1,200, totally fine to fly to New Zealand, but, but 1000 well, that's way too cheap. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't like when airlines look at past or customers and they're like, well, you should have known better than to book something we published. Yeah. Like, why? What? Like, I, I mean, honestly, unless you're people like us or like frequent flyers, how could you possibly know? I mean, I feel like sometimes like I'll tell somebody, oh, I, oh, this is a good example. I flew mint to Vegas. I always do. Right. It's not that bad. It's like, <laughs> I always do. Bougie. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Let's say you're flying first class on um, American or United, like Polaris, or you're doing flagship first flights, right? Those are like 1800 bucks. So yeah, comparatively speaking, if I'm doing yeah. JetBlue, which is business, but it's as good as any domestic first product I've ever seen. Better, you know? it's better. It's, yeah, it's the best. So for 500 bucks, I'm very happy with that, right? Yeah. So I told a friend like, oh yeah, we always fly like Mint to Vegas. It's, you know, it's a really good value. And she was like, oh, you flew Mint? And I was like, how much do you think it costs? You know? And I just- $12,000. Like, you know, like in the thousands, right. And so I feel like, you know, unless you're a very common traveler, like you don't think that these premium products are within your reach ever, right? Yeah. Unless you've been- and, like, and honestly, like, I mean- we're speaking to a particular like segment of society, obviously for a lot of people, like I, I still remember when I first got into points, I would see fair deals posted to Europe where it was like, oh, $1,200, $1,400 in business. And they're like, what a great deal. And I was like, are you kidding me? I'm not spending $1,400 to go to Europe. Like, I was like, I mean, it's, I was in DC, so I wasn't actually saying that's more than my rent. I was going, that's almost as much as my rent. Um, but still like for a lot of people, like I definitely get like, yeah, even a fair deal for business people aren't going to book but there are a number of people who have like worked their way into a situation like a financial situation that's like no you're not just like flicking 15 grand at an international first class ticket but if you see fifteen hundred dollars to europe you're like oh maybe um so or 1200 sometimes like you know you can get some really cool deals out of it and it's not as like out of reach as i think some people think it is yeah um, I think another problem with that is, and the reason that people tend to think that it's so out of reach is because such a huge proportion of our population is like financially uh, illiterate. Strapped. Credit card. <laughs> no. Oh, that too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, you know, like there's like the Dave Ramsey crowd and that's like a huge like portion of the God, US. He would hate me. He would hate me so much. <laughs> I mean, I think he would- I'm pretty him. sure he actually um, blocked Bryce from 10X Travel on Twitter. Um, when Bryce like contradicted him on some things. Was Bryce trolling him or was it just like a one-time thing? I'm not actually sure. I mean, define troll. Um, I think he pointed out that you can do some things with credit cards if you understand what you're doing and pay them off every month and like don't carry a balance and that just doesn't fit the doctrine, I guess. Yeah, well, I can't wait for all the Dave Ramsey fans to come comment on all of your stuff now. They're gonna be so angry. Oh, they for sure will. I can't, <laughs> I can't wait until I have to start blocking people. So trolls, come for me. I am here. I am ready. <laughs> Just get, getting your hand like warmed up. You're like, and click, block, yep. block. No. I don't think I've ever blocked anyone. 
oh, I'm not I doing know. it right. I'm not doing it right. I've had to block people because I love Tiger Woods. And there is a... I just don't care enough about sports figures. Either way. <laughs> like, I, just, I love the guy. Yeah, came on to talk about points, and now we're talking about Tiger Woods' <laughs> like, marriage. and I can't do this. I mean, <laughs> and I'm out. <laughs> you knew what you were getting into. You hung out with Did me. I? Yeah, it's true. Oh, my God. Wait, we have to tell my favorite story. All right. So when we went to Europe, <laughs> I think my favorite travel story of all time actually of all time like anywhere i've been was watching you read sugar-free gummy reviews oh my gosh so funny i cry every time that <laughs> harry bow sugar-free gummies just crying. tears tears <laughs> it's so funny i'm just thinking about it now i start crying oh it's so funny so it's funny it's like Tell every me. time i see the word sugar-free I think about you just <laughs> dying read an Amazon review. And like, oh, but it's so funny. It's just like, it hits right. I don't know why. I think they're amazing. I do too. Uh, I mean, I, I think like it's because I empathize really well with people. And so like, I'm just imagining that situation, but oh, rather than but, that that you're laughing so hard, but rather than, yeah, but my response apparently is not to be like, it must be so horrible. My response is, Oh my God, this would be the funniest thing in a TV show. I often think about things like that. This would be really funny in a TV show. Miserable <laughs> for you, but in a TV show, hilarious. It was like with each one, it just kept getting worse and worse. And then you had to pass the phone. I was like, somebody else read. <laughs> Keep going. Through it. And then Julie was like, guys, there's something wrong with both of you. She's like, I got this. <laughs> Stone face. Julie can get through it. Any, <laughs> any Amazon review that nobody else can. Oh, we also God. watched other videos that trip, but uh, yeah, why not? I don't know. <laughs> Reaction. Thomas <videos>. Swift. <laughs> I remember Swifty was like oh, showing things. Yeah. No, he but was. No, he he, he, I don't it know. Was the, it was the uh, two girls, one cup reaction videos. <laughs> and then he got mad at us at dinner for college. About it. <laughs> oh, for referencing it. Yeah. Oh, college. And then one of our friends' friends, Pierre, almost watched it at dinner, and we were all like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot about that." Oh yeah, that was a good day. That was a really. Good that was day. a. It's still like flashbacks to college when one of my like floor mates like ran up and was like, "Hey, check this out!" and flipped a laptop around in front of us, and we were like, "Well, my day's ruined." Terrible. Watch the Adam Ferrara reaction though, if you ever have a chance. That's, oh, that's the a best. Really good one. That's a really good one. Swifty again is going to get very upset with this conversation. <laughs> Why? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> only, no, his point was only if we're at dinner, you can't talk about it. <laughs> we'll send him this video yeah, uh, sure. while he's sitting down for dinner. <laughs> Hi, Tom Swift. We love you. <laughs> um, okay, so on to our last segment plead the fifth where Spencer has agreed to get himself into trouble. It's what it totally happened. All right. Cool. Let's <laughs> okay. try. So, and you know, you've seen like one of my videos, so at least you know <laughs> what's coming. Oh, Mark Osterman. <laughs> <laughs> so what's funny is that Adam, a uh, travel fanboy, who is the best, um, chose Mark as his uh, pandemic <laughs> all on it. So. Oh, it's like <laughs> stealing <laughs> options now. Can't tell me those things. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay. Well, he's still available. Okay. <clears throat> so in Plead the Fifth, I ask three questions that get a little spicy, and Spencer is free to <laughs> free to plead the fifth to one of them on the grounds that it might incriminate him, you know, just like okay. a regular courtroom because I'm a lawyer. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I have adjudicated myself to be the judge and <laughs> what we're doing on Spill the Tea. Okay, Spencer, are you ready to play Plead the Fifth? Yeah, why not? All this right. can't end well. <laughs> okay, so your first question is, what blog, bloggers, or like it could be any personality in Miles and Points or award travel, is a pandemic all on their own? Like who's just the worst? The worst? I feel like I shouldn't answer this. Um, God, I don't know if I, I don't know if I, what's that? 
I think you should go with that. You mean other than Mark? Other than Mark. <laughs> That's what he gets for calling me Stewie. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's go with Mark, just for calling me Stewie. I like that. <laughs> Mostly because he also said some very nice things about me, too. It's even better for me to be like, you're the worst, Mark. <laughs> yeah, he picked you as, as the one that you'll answer later, so you yeah. can't pick Mark. <laughs> okay, so are you pleading the fifth? Oh, I said Mark. Oh, okay, all right. I'm going to just slap him in the face. We're just going to stick with that. <laughs> He'll appreciate okay. it. He looks like somebody who likes to get slapped. <laughs> He's going to love that you said that. Um, also, he Have you got hit him? No. Did you see my uh, Instagram story of me getting no. spanked by the two dominatrices? two dominatrixes in vegas that sounds like something you would get into mark made that happen <laughs> that also sounds like something that would happen <laughs> yep that, when your friends live up to their reputations perfectly <laughs> yep yep i mean the, yeah so we have a really good time that is the <laughs> friday night 5 p.m on my youtube channel every friday me and mark it's you know it's happy hour me I thought mark. you were saying that happened at 5 p.m. in Vegas, and I was like, wow, what happened at the rest of the night? No, no. Okay. Yeah, we were good at that point. That was you were just getting ready. You are just getting in the mood oh, to yeah. gamble. Yeah, if you ever get the opportunity to come and hang out with Mark and I in Vegas, you should do it. <laughs> Bethany's inviting everyone to come along next time. I mean, you know, it's something not to miss. Okay, so question number two. Shag, marry, kill. Are you familiar with the game? <laughs> yes. Okay. And do you want guys or girls? And I picked people who I think you probably really like. <laughs> As people? Good. Hard. Yep. We are going to go with Gilbert. I knew Gib would be there. Who else do you think is there? I have no idea, but I knew Gib would. Uh-huh. Gary. Oh. And Richard Kerr. <laughs> oh, Rich. <Jesus. laughs> Hmm. Let's see. Well, I could watch sports all day with Rich, so we'll marry Rich. Um, Gib and I are both opinionated people, so we'll just have to, like, you know, one might stand with him and move on. Uh, <laughs> and I'm sorry, Gary. It's not even, and it's not anything personal. It's just that's the last option. So you know, I'm gonna have to let him go. Yeah. yeah. That's what the kill So unfortunate. <laughs> so unfortunate. It's just, you know, it's, I'm looking at life expectancy from everyone involved and, you know, there's more <laughs> years left for them. No, just... <laughs> That's good. All right. So, I mean, you're not going to plead the fifth on the last one. So I would say that you are probably going to be the second person to successfully complete, plead the fifth. The third one is who's the best blog? Like, who do you think other than you, of course, is the best travel slash miles and points slash whatever person out there. Blog or blogger? It's up to you. Yeah. And it can't be anybody you work with. Don't try to cheat. No, I'm just thinking about it. I have to pick one single person? No, or a team. It could be like a yeah. website too. Well, I have two separate people that I wanted to like well, since you didn't play the fifth, feel free to go for right. it. Okay, cool. <laughs> Stefan uh, Krasowski doesn't write a ton on Rapid Travel Chai, though he should. He is brilliant. Um, also, uh, time out. Seeing him moderate a panel. Best thing ever. Wow. Like. Not even just moderate. Anytime he does play uh, a presentation. Uh, I mean, he's a very quiet, reserved person outside of it but like it just bam turns on and it's the best presentation you'll have at a conference uh, and he's so friendly and he's so happy to answer all kinds of questions and i mean from like beginner to advanced he doesn't care what it is he's happy to do it like just awesome human um and then the other one is tiffany funk who doesn't get enough credit for what she does at one mile at a time um making me mention her again since i've already mentioned her in every single video because I'm you have and i'm doing it i'm doing it i think she is like one of one of if not the smartest person in miles and points um and just 
I wish she wrote more because she writes awesome stuff, but I know she's, you know, running the site and that takes a lot of time. So also, if you see her do a talk, she's great and super welcoming to questions from everybody. And I, I mean, she's an absolute pro. So what's so cool about Tiffany is that she will do like, um, we just did the travel adventure show and I was, you know, sitting there just like watching her do like a beginner's presentation, which, um, I wish I could say this about myself, but I feel like not above them in the sense that like I'm too good for them. It's just I'm not interested in speaking about beginner stuff. Bethany says these things from her suite at the Four Seasons. <laughs> Drinking champagne. I don't want to say that I'm better than you people on the street <laughs> down below me, you know. That's not what I mean. I mean that she gives <laughs> like the same attention to a beginner subject that she yeah. does like the super advanced stuff that like only a very small portion of the world know, right? Yep. And she's happy to like explain it like soup to nuts. And I found that to be like, well, first of all, she's an amazing presenter. Yep. But also I found that to be like, she must be a really good person. Yes. <laughs> because I don't care to take the time to explain <laughs> <things> to people. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, Tiffany is a, an awesome human. Um, there's no question. Um, but like, oddly enough, I've actually, met and hung out with uh, or met up with and hung out with both Stefan and Tiffany abroad oddly enough yeah. I think Tiffany I think I saw Tiffany and her husband in um, Sydney and Stefan and his wife in Hong Kong um, so you know it's a uh, they are very well traveled both of them and they're both super sharp yep yeah two of probably the best people to see live yep. um, all right so you successfully made it through uh speaking of tiffany you have an instagram live well hopefully i'll be able to get this out like tomorrow <laughs> afternoon so tell us when it is uh like what time so if this, if this goes out tomorrow afternoon today at 6 30 p.m eastern time <laughs> so tiffany funk from one mile at a time wednesday on wednesday what is that april 29th <laughs> yeah uh, all days just kind of melt yeah this tiffany's going to come on to my uh Instagram live and do uh, a nice little kind of chat and Q and A. Um, my Instagram is at straight to the points. So pretty easy. Um, and then I actually have one on Friday with Ed Pizzarello from Pizza in Motion, also a boarding area blog. Uh, another person who is absolutely awesome. Um, and so helpful to people in the Mize and Points community, whether blogger or just someone trying to figure it all out. So that'll be Friday at 5.30 PM Eastern time. And that's what's Friday. I don't know what day Friday is. Is it May first? Whatever. Y'all will figure it out. <laughs> so, <laughs> easiest thing to do is just follow me on Instagram, and then you just you know get a little notification. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that'll be in the links, and then of course at five you have Mark and I. So why not grab a drink, start with Mark and I, and then you can ease into the night with. <laughs> Ed and Spencer. Um, all right. So everybody, please subscribe. It really makes a difference. Uh, make sure you follow Spencer at all of his things, which will be in the links. And yeah, bougiemiles.com. Come check me out. Give me a thumbs up. All right. Thanks then, for having me. Yes. And then Spencer, very nice to see you. Um, Always a pleasure. It's okay if you say no, but have you seen any of the episodes? I watched what you did with Mark, at least. How many have you done with Mark? I watched the one where he, like, talked about calling me Stewie, which okay, was okay. Yeah, so, so right. funny. Oh, my God. I, I was just there for that. <laughs> well, because, like, when it happened, Sean, like, was just mercilessly making fun of him after the fact. Because um, he, like, yells it to me. I didn't even hear him. I just, like, jumped in an Uber, like, right off, and I, like, get a message and then like I don't pay any attention to it and I'm just like oh, I'll check it later <laughs> and apparently he's like freaking out and like oh my god I've like offended Spencer <laughs> and Sean's like I'm sure he doesn't care like and so I like checked my phone later and I was like oh I didn't even hear you <laughs> <laughs> so I like, could have avoided the whole thing <laughs> he's just like panicking because I'm not responding thinking that like I must be pissed oh, uh, be but as I <laughs> I was like I as, really care. <laughs> as, as I told him later, and this is, it's so random, but like for some reason when people mess up my name, I get called Stuart. And I've, I mean, since kindergarten, 
And I've never understood it. And it's just like, how does Spencer go to Stewart? Like, I don't, it doesn't feel similar. Like I, even though it annoys me, I understand when people spell my name with a second S instead of a C. Um, that's weird. Because, I, because that's weird. But like, you know, people do that in emails to me sometimes, but I get that. Um, I just reply with the C bolded and I capitalize it and I make it bigger and bigger and bigger until they spell my name right. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. It's like the email's like half of a C. It's like C is a half the email. And they're like, oh, your name's with a C. And I'm like, I, I don't know what gave it away. Oh my. Size 128 font. No. <laughs> that, that, that's awesome. I don't even like when people call me Beth, I don't even like I'll write like I'll do comma Bethany, but if they never get it, uh, I just, I mean part of it's just because I want to amuse myself. Um, yeah. Mostly, what I get is I get called Howard because Howard and Spencer are both first names and both last names. So like every year, which is funny to me in school, it was yeah. always tough for teachers because they would like read all the names and they'd be like Spen Howard Spencer, and I was like, you realize that it's the same format as everyone else. Last name, comma, first name. It's not like they just switched it for me. Like, <laughs> I never understood why that was such a point of confusion. Like, what are you gonna do? Ask 